Hello everyone, back to you into today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days for today's second video, uh, which is going to take us to around 23rd of uh, March, and we'll bring it to date with all of the latest developments stratosphere-wise as well. Running extremely late today, so I won't talk about anything else. Let's just get on with it. And we're going to begin with uh, the temperature at 10 HPA over the uh, North Pole. Because we've been talking in the videos a lot lately about how we could be on, well, we are on course for a very significant warming of the stratosphere at 10 HPA over the Arctic of the North Pole. That's still on course. So I'll just run you through these charts. This is where we're starting off right now at 10 HPA with those blue colours. It is very cold. As we run through, you'll see that the yellow and green colours appear from the Atlantic and uh, very significant warming of the stratosphere intensifies through next week, 21st of March. There we are. We are having a sudden stratospheric warming. The red colours are there over top of the pole. And uh, this is a very, very significant warming of the stratosphere. Indeed, as we run up towards day 10, that intensifies further around uh, day sort of 8, 9 to 10. Uh, again, this is um, reaching temperature thresholds for a sudden stratospheric warming. And as we run out beyond that, of course, we can't maintain those very high temperatures for all that long at 10 HPA. But nevertheless, we uh, see those green and colours continuing to be there over top of the Arctic and the Pole. So the sudden stratospheric warming is on course still uh, through, it's, well, it's going to begin in around three to four days time, actually. But it reaches its peak around day seven, eight, nine and ten. And uh, of course, then we will be looking to see what impacts that has as we push on out of um, uh, March and into April. ECM is also showing this up as well. This is from the University of Berlin. Currently, we've got these blue colours here. Cold temperatures, uh, or cold average anyway, at 10 HPA in stratosphere over the North Pole. Uh, in 120 hours' time, this is how we look, 17th of March. And then we can see that warming is taking place, significant warming taking place from the North Atlantic, beginning to move in towards the Arctic. The uh, black X we have there marking out the North Pole itself. And in two weeks' time, or in 10 days' time, I should say, we have reached sudden stratospheric warming temperature levels. We're around minus 15 to minus 10 uh, at our maximum here with these deep red to orange colours. And yes, that's very indicative of a sudden stratospheric warming taking place at 10 HPA. Going low down to 30 HPA. Uh, at the moment, cold temperatures there are continuing. Let's change the colour. Uh, cold temperatures are continuing at 30 HPA, much colder than average. Uh, but by day 10, we are seeing signs that the warming that's taking place at 10 HPA is beginning to propagate down to 30 HPA. Remember, 30 HPA is getting much closer to the troposphere. It's kind of like on the boundary between the stratosphere and the troposphere. Troposphere being the boundary level of the atmosphere where weather is taking place. So, yes, warming is beginning to appear at 30 HPA as well in around 10 days' time. These are very, very significant developments. They're almost certainly going to lead to an end of the polar vortex as we move through April and into May. Uh, we will see the end of polar vortex as we always do as we run from uh, sort of spring in towards summer. The only question, because we're having this sun stratospheric warming, is whether that happens dramatically. Uh, that end of the polar vortex happens dramatically. And if it does, does it lead to northern blocking? If we get northern blocking in April, it is not too late to get significant cold weather. You can get very hard overnight frost in April, which can damage fruit blossom. Can also sometimes get snow in April as well. So uh, all eyes will be on what effects this very significant warming stratosphere has as we move on from March into April. And, of course, we'll keep you updated both about the uh, stratospheric warming and also any uh, impacts afterwards. We'll keep you updated about that uh, in, uh, in future videos in the coming days. Uh, these are GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Next couple of weeks, we're looking at Norwich today. Red line is a 30-year upper air temperature average for Norwich. Starting off a little bit on the cool side at the moment. It's actually going to lift up really through to the early part of next week. And then second half of next week actually becomes quite cold again. Temperatures do drop quite a lot. Through the last week of March, we've had, we have had quite a bit of scatter. Uh, warm ensemble members up here. Cold ensemble members down here. You'll notice that the thick green line, which is the GFS operation, 
operation run, six o'clock operation run, is just here. And uh, uh, one point around day sort of um, eight, nine, and ten, that's just about the coldest option within the GFS on So not quite an outlier, but it's certainly just about the coldest option. I'll show you how it does that uh, in a moment. Precipitation wise, just a lot drier than it has been. Not completely dry. There will be some showery bursts around, but overall, just a lot drier really for precipitation uh, than it has been in uh, the past few weeks and months. Temperature anomalies on the 13th, 21st of March are near North England and Wales, cold and average Scotland, means Mato. Uh, means may train colder in the next few days. Precipitation anomalies from the 13th, 21st of March, drier than average for England and Wales, nearer normal, further north. That's how the uh, GFS 6 o'clock operational run is looking for money, or was looking. The midday run is actually updating as we're uh, recording this video because I'm so late today, going to be a second video done. Uh, but uh, yes, high pressure beginning to build up from the southwest on the 6 o'clock GFS run for the early part of next week, brings a taste of spring to England and Wales. It's a little bit more settle though up to the north into the second half of next week though we begin to take that high pressure out to our west this is thursday next week 19th march high pressure is moving out to our west there's a cold front through here and as that cold front sinks southwards it does start to turn wind into the north cold air begins to dig in from the north and as we go towards the end of next week then we're under high pressure so it's mainly dry but it's cold winds are in from the north and from the northeast and look at the upper air temperatures showing that yes uk and ireland are cold but look how cold it is by Saturday 21st of March across much of northern Europe Scandinavia Baltic regions western Russia probably cold with the upper air temperatures than they've been at any point through the winter just gone quite remarkable uh that and I'm just going to show you how things can change so very quickly with the weather now what happens with this uh gfs run is that the high pressure then sets up over scandinavia and we turn the wind into the east so we do eventually start to pull in those cold upper air temperatures from the east and there we are at day 10 which is monday the 23rd of march and yes for minus 10 celsius ice firm there is being pushed through England and Wales so that's easily cold enough for any precipitation to fall as snow and with easterly winds there will probably be snow showers for southern and eastern parts of the country remember though we can see within the GFS ensembles that that is just about the coldest option it was just about the coldest option within uh, that six o'clock suite of ensemble members Moving out beyond that, well, eventually start to build up some higher pressure from the south. So as we come towards the end of March, we're still under high pressure, so a lot of dry weather. But now the wind is wafting up from uh, the southwest, and we're back into those yellow colours. So after that short, sharp shock of cold easterly, as we do uh, go back into spring by sort of month's end. Uh, GM looks like that. So again, high pressure is ridging up from the southwest through the early part of next week, bringing a taste of spring to England and Wales. It could still be a bit unsettling in the north. Second half of next week, again, the high pressure pulls out to our west. We start to dig down these colder winds from the north. And then as we move up towards day 10, high pressure sets up over Scandinavia. We pull wind in from the east. That's very similar to what the GFS is showing around days 8, 9, and 10. The only difference, though, is that the GM is much, much milder with the upper air temperatures nowhere near as cold as the upper air temperatures were on the six o'clock GFS run. And then uh, the ECM also looks like that. So high pressure rising up from the southwest on Monday, bringing a lot of dry weather to England and Wales, probably relatively spring like still unsettled though in the north. Second half next week, same idea. The high pressure pulls out to the west of us. We turn the wind into the north. So uh, ECM also going for a bit of a cold snap into the second half next week. I and mean, then the difference with UCM is that we don't take the high pressure to Scandinavia. Instead, we just set the high pressure up over the top of the UK. And uh, that will be very pleasant, actually. That's uh, day 10, Monday 23rd of March. We're under a big ridge of high pressure. It's not over Scandinavia, so we're not pulling in any ECM. The ECM is on the ECM solution are going down to sort of Balkans, Italy, that sort of area down here. We're just on about ridge of high pressure. Could be cold by night, so it could be night frost, I suppose. But by day, in the ever strengthening March sunshine, probably relatively spring like. I think if you want to spell a nice spring like uh, weather, the ECM is the best of the three. Uh, these are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today. 
for day 10, uh, which gets us to the 23rd of uh, March. So we have 18 members of the ECM ensembles, including the control room that have a Scandinavian high. And they're probably pulling in quite cold air from the northeast. 13, including the operational run, have the high pressure sort of just to our east, really. Um, but not as far north as like these 18 just here. So they're pulling in like a gentle east southeasterly, not particularly cold. 13 have a high pressure a lot further north with a trough to our cell. They're bringing a proper easterly and look cold. Four, with high pressure sort of giving way to our east to low pressure to the west. They're turning things unsettled again from the southwest. And then three, with high pressure over and just to the west of the country. Lots and lots of high pressure within those options. The only question is where the high pressure is sitting exactly in relation to um, what the temperature's doing. And then in two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. This gets us to the 28th of uh, April. We have 18 members of the ECM on Solar Zone with high pressure to the north. They're probably bringing in an easy wind. They could be dry and quite cold. 17 with high pressure to our east. Otherwise, not much else going on. There's probably some sort of a trough through here, though. And then 16 with high pressure even further north. Uh, again, could be bringing in an easy wind, but there is low pressure to the south as well. Uh, and then finally, for this video, CFSV2, this would be 700 millibar high dominantly from the CFSV2 for April. So um, the CFS uh, anomaly, 700 millibar high dominantly, has low pressure to the north for April, high pressure to the south. It's basically a continuation of the fact we've had all winter and into spring, westerlies go on. The only difference, of course, is that it's April, so the low pressure is, uh, is weaker, and therefore the ridge from the south southwest is stronger. Temperature anomalies with the CFSV2 for April are very close to average. Um, precipitation anomaly is also very close to average as well. Uh, however, that uh, low pressure that we see there over Greenland, I'm not sure about that after this uh, major warming of the stratosphere that's going to be occurring uh, next week. So we shall wait and see about that. Right, I've rattled through that at a really fast pace. I hope you managed to keep up with it. Obviously, just done that because of how late uh, we're running today. Um, so tomorrow, we've got weekend forecast coming up for you. We'll have a week to 10-day video update as well. Uh, tomorrow is Sunday. We've got some more uh, summer analogues, second summer uh, analogues update. Be honest. It could be quite interesting to watch that because we're looking at winter to summer data. And we'll have Gals to have his Sunday Roundup on Sunday as well. Uh, right, don't forget to check out Jeremy Friday if you haven't yet done so. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.